it's a very incestuous issue, um, cyberbullying. Um, Ms. Paris indicated that she came to us for help. The medical center that uh, the doctor works at had come to us for help. I wrote LMK for the Girl Scouts. And Dr. Phil's offices call mine all the time. And Build-A-Bear cares a great deal and have come to us. If you look at this, you recognize that there's six degrees of separation from everyone who cares about cyberbullying. I'm a cyberbullying expert, not a bullying one. And there is a difference. I would caution people to stop thinking of bullying and cyberbullying as only the difference in the technologies that they use. We find that different kids will cyberbully than others. I always say the girls and the geeks are empowered by technology. Often they'll take on the most popular kids in school. I'll share something I hadn't put in my testimony. I was called by one of the top medical centers that deals with children who are very seriously physically challenged. I'm in a different place every day. I donate my time to Running Wired Safety and fund it largely from my pocket. And I got the phone call and they said, we have a serious problem here at the medical center with all of these children and cyberbullying. And I canceled my speaking engagement. I got in my car and drove far faster than I can put in testimony here before you today. And while I drove up into the school and I said, I want to talk to the students, and I drove up and I walked in and I was late as usual. They handed me a microphone and in front of me was a room full of children who were typing with a device in their teeth, who had breathing apparatus, who couldn't walk, many of them who couldn't talk, many who couldn't see. And I stood up and I said, I am so angry that this has happened to you. I am so angry that people are taking the one technology that gives you access to the world, the one roads without ramps, and they are doing this and hurting you. And the head of the medical center came over and she tapped me on the shoulder and she said, Perry, uh, they aren't being cyberbullied, she said. They're cyberbullying others. And I know you're not supposed to cheer with this, but you need to recognize that you never really truly know who's on the other side of the device. It's not just internet. It's not just the social networks. It's not just Flickr, and it's not just handheld gaming devices, where kids are now insulting each other on PictoChat through DS. It's not just the Xboxes and Playstations of the world where the kids are game bullying. It's not just the cell phones where they're saying terrible things to each other. Actually, there's 67 different ways the teens who work for me, who modeled the Girl Scouts, and my guess is uh, we can get some answers here as well. You can not, 67 different ways you can use a cell phone to cyber harass and cyber bully someone. The kids are very inventive. If they spent as much time studying as they did finding ways to torment each other, we could all go home. I agreed to cancel a major event that I was doing with Build-A-Bear for mommy bloggers to be here today. One of the reasons is because of the very strong bipartisanship of the leadership of this particular subcommittee. You do things. You don't just talk. I don't have time for people who just talk. We have to find ways of doing it. So how do we do that? We reach out to everyone. We reach out to the Dr. Phil's of the world. We get Diane Sawyer to do a town meeting on sexting on Good Morning America, first time ever in the morning. And every time Matt Lauer or Meredith have a question about cyberbullying, you make sure you're in studio no matter where you started out that day before. As we look at this, there are other cyber safety experts in the world, and many of them say that it's not so bad. I think many of those are not in the trenches. You don't have to ask me how bad it is. You have someone who's involved in a middle school to tell you how bad it is. I spoke to 44,000 middle schoolers across the United States a couple of years ago, and I asked them if they had been cyberbullied. Not that way, because it all depends on definition. You lay out the kinds of things that constitute cyberbullying. Has anyone ever taken a picture of you and put your head on someone else's naked body or took a real one of you and passed it out, told your secrets, gone in, done something terrible on your social networking page, and changed your password so you can't change it back? Did they take your cell phone that was out on a counter unattended and send terrible things to your friends that you're going to get blamed? The answers go on and on as to what constitutes cyberbullying. The answer is generally minor to minor, using technology as a weapon to hurt another. What do we do? We need help. Nobody has any money in this space. I work for free. I think a lot of others do as well. Unfunded programs in Texas, the good thing is we share. 
In the olden days, if you wanted to bake a cake, you'd ask somebody to bring some flour and somebody else to bring some eggs and someone else to bring some sugar, and at the end, everybody got a few pieces to take home. That's what we have to do here. There are proposals on the Hill to look at funding these issues, but I don't need funding right now. I just need partners. So when the Girl Scout said we want to do something, I said, tell me how fast we can. Two and a half million girls are now change agents. It started with my Teen Angels program and ranking member Platts, I want your son in my Tween Angels program. Tell him we'll be advising Toys R Us and Nintendo. My guess is he might join us. We need to get out there and do this. And the industry, and in, today I'm not speaking as the head of Wired Safety, the oldest and largest cyber safety charity, or an advisor to the industry. Today I'm going to tell you that in addition to all of the bad news we've been talking about, about cyberbullying and how much it's out there and how often it hurts our children and how the different technologies are affected, there's a lot of good news too. Good news you're, hearing, you're seeing and hearing here, attention that's being paid to it, Dr. Phil's shows and others from Build-A-Bear, and I'm not going to steal Dave's thunder, from schools and, and, and teachers and school administrators who care so much, and mental health experts and young people. But you also have MTVs, a thin line. I got a phone call a year and a half ago from the head of public affairs, and he said, we want to do something like rock the vote, but we want to rock the world on what's happening to our kids with digital abuse. They created something that's going to live on long beyond what we started designing. You have Microsoft that paid for the LMM, uh, LMK program and so many others. You have Disney that started in cyber safety in 1997 when they first called, and I even did a designing spaces for them on how to design a safer room for kids in cyber technology. You have Facebook that just put five people on the safety advisory board. I'm one of them. Um, and you have the Ostwig, all of these things that are happening. The industry is behind this, and all of them want to be there. Why? because they're parents, because they have customers, because they have people who they care about, because they have an obligation to create safer communities, safer networks. They are creating new technologies. They're branding themselves with best practices seals. They are saying, we have employees. Come in and talk to 5,000 of our employees about these things. IBM commissioned Ceridian to put it out to all of their employees, and we put together some podcasts and videos. Industry already has stores. Industry already has employees. They have distribution arms. They have communication networks. And they are very happy to share them for free. And they now understand that being safe for kids is good for business. So as we look at this, we need to include them because sometimes they're the only place where money exists. And even if they don't have money, they've got in-kind expertise that they're happy to share. So we need to recognize there are a lot of bad things industry does, but in this case, I've seen a lot more good than bad. I'm here to answer any questions I can and help in any way I can, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Thank you.